I nearly didn't make this video today just because it seemed like such common sense in investing. But as I looked further into news articles online, it seemed like many people were going to make this mistake. The numbers were huge in the millions of Australians who were looking to pull out their superannuation. And for the Americans, this is called their 401k. So you guys watching, if you have the option to pull out your 401k, I would think it's common sense not to do that at such a young age. But stick around with me, I'll go through the numbers and maybe you can save a friend or family member the hassle and the potential massive losses in the future of pulling out their super. Now it's not financial advice, you can do whatever the hell it is you want to do of course, but if you look at the numbers historically, pulling out money at this time in the market is a very bad idea. It can lead to huge losses in the future, especially when a market is down so much you're better off pulling out money when the market's up. So if you find yourself in this basket and you are really needing some other cash around the place, try and look anywhere else apart from your superannuation, basically your retirement fund, and just try and make ends meet. And I'll go through a few of those steps as well. Uh, the government website here is actually quite good discussing different ways to do that. But for now, let's dive into the numbers and try to make sense of this $47,000 mistake that many people are looking to do. Now, I've just said that it's a huge mistake if you're gonna pull out money. I should probably go and back it up with a few numbers. So let's start with some of the average wages in Australia. And I've got my figures here. If you look at hospitality, hospitality here gets paid pretty well, which is why a lot of people from overseas love to come to Australia, you earn a few bucks, go home, hopefully you've got some savings, you haven't blown it all on alcohol here because alcohol is ridiculously expensive here as well. So if we're looking at the average wage, so minimum wage, 21 year old is what's considered an adult, under 21, the wages are scaled back. So we're going with a minimum wage of $19.49 for a 21 year old. And if you're working a 38 hour week, which is pretty typical, $740.62. I'll probably just go with some round numbers. So if you hear me just rounding up these numbers, that's why. For casual workers, which is generally most industries in terms of hospitality, uh, obviously bar work, takeaway, uh, food, anything like that, uh, there's a lot of casual work in there. So. In Australia, you get a casual loading, so you get extra on top of your minimum wage for being a casual, and that's generally around 25%. So if we start to add all these figures up, we've got $740, which is the standard week minimum wage. Now we add the 25% and we get $925. And so that hourly rate works out to be about $24.36. That's a pretty decent minimum wage for a casual worker, I would think. Let's say we do that $925 and we try and work out an annual income from that. We'll say 48 weeks of work because it's 40, 52 weeks in a year. And we'll say we take four weeks off. That gives us $44,437 for the year. The superannuation. So in Australia, it is a minimum of 9.5% of your annual income. And that also includes casual workers. They'll also get the 9.5%. So we've got the minimum wage of 44,437 plus the 9.5%, $4,221 goes into your super. So if you're getting that every year, let's say for five years, the total is gonna to be $21,105. So in your five years, your first five years as an adult worker, you have about $21,000. That's not including any of the stock market gains or losses. And it just so happened, complete coincidence from today's video. As I'm filming it, the stock market is at the same price as it was on the first week of January, 2015. So as it opened, opened around 5,411 points. So it kind of works out well for the video. There is no gains. It's just, let's just zero it off. You put money in five years ago in January. Uh, you've been building up your superannuation for that last five years. You have $21,000 over that course of time. There's obviously no gains because the market's fallen right back to where it began five years ago. What the government has offered is a withdrawal of $10,000 before June 30th, 2020. And then you can also take another $10,000 after June 30th, so 1st of July onwards. So you can take a maximum of $20,000. Essentially, you could withdraw all of your super money, bar $1,100, which you would leave in there. So let's assume you take out the $20,000 because well, for whatever reason, that's what a lot of people are doing in Australia. They're not gonna accept everyone, 
But from what I can hear and what I can see from the polls, it looks like a lot of people are trying to do that. I'll go to another very critical point on that later. You might have already guessed it, but we'll go to that in a minute. 10,000 at 26. So we've worked for five years, we're 26 years old. The average age of my viewers is around that mid 20s. So this kind of works out for a lot of people. I'm only assuming a minimum wage here as well, remember? So we're only looking at the absolute bare minimum. And $10,000 at 26 years old, withdrawn at this point, that could potentially be a loss at retirement, and retirement in Australia is 67 years old, it can be a loss of $23,363. Pretty conservative. The figures are off the government website, Money Smart Calculator, I'll leave a link to that down below. They have a lot of good information there and resources to use. The article that I got this from on 9.com.au, a bit more information there, they estimated it could be upwards of $120,000 for the $20,000 if you were to withdraw it now. That is a huge difference. So I'm gonna go with the conservative numbers here from the government website. And the first 10,000, 23,363 loss in that 41 year projection time. Take out the other 10,000 after June 30th, there's another 23,363. So the total loss is somewhere around 46,726 at retirement age of 67. Considering if you had put in that $20,000 into your super, which is all the bare minimums I can find on their websites. Obviously this could be a whole lot more and it's just very sad to see that this amount of money could be lost because people aren't aware of what they should be doing with their money in times of crashes. Not only does that sound like a huge amount of money now, 46,700 odd, this is in today's dollars. So if we go forward 40 years, you've got inflation, everything's going up, you've got the gains in the stock market, assumingly that the stock markets all continue to forge ahead like they have done for the last several hundred years. So this amount is very insignificant compared to what it could be in 40 years time. Looking to the assumptions that the government has made on their website, we can see here that the estimates provided are shown in today's dollars, which I just said, which means that they are adjusted for inflation by 4% per annum, 2.5% per annum due to the rising cost of living, CPI inflation, and a further 1.5% per annum for the cost of rising community living standards. Next, investment returns are defaulted to an assumed rate of investment return before tax and fees of 7.5% per annum. So they're assuming you'll make 7.5% in the stock market or wherever the money is invested in the super fund uh, per annum of 7.5% before tax and of course before fees as well from whatever the super fund company will take. And the last thing is assumed tax on earnings is 7%. So it's not gonna be at the same 30% or whatever tax bracket you're in because of course this is your retirement fund, your superannuation money, and they're not gonna tax you at that same amount. So the assumed tax on earnings is 7%. You can see it's all pretty standard assumptions and that is a very conservative figure of a loss in the future of at least $46,000 if you were to withdraw the 20,000 now. Lastly, let's take a look at the charts that I've just put up before of the Aussie market and let's discuss why this could be an absolutely terrible idea about withdrawing your money at this point in time. We know a little bit about human psychology if we've been watching this channel for some time and we know that people tend to act in herds. So if the government is giving us access to our superannuation money, essentially money that we would never touch until we're at least 55, 67, depending on circumstances at that point in our life, then people are wanting to probably take that money out. And now if everyone withdraws at the same time, you can guess what's going to happen to the market. So it's probably gonna be a bit of a stir, a bit of a craze early on to see who can get their money out the quickest. Uh, some people are obviously gonna know this, so they're gonna to wanna to get it out before the other people. And I see that leading to another fall in the market, which has basically been manufactured by the government if this law proceeds, which it sounds like it is. And not only will there be a rush on withdrawing the superannuation money in the first month or so as this money gets released, then we have the second round of the other $10,000 that you can withdraw after our financial year ends on June 30th. So the next financial year starts on 1st of July and you can bet that there's gonna be another rush on the superannuation being pulled out of the market. And it just seems absolutely crazy as to why they would allow this. Sure, people are hurting and they need money now, but this is just gonna hurt the society later on. It's gonna hurt our society, it's gonna hurt government 
in 10, 20, 30 years. And it just, it doesn't make sense uh, from an investment standpoint to withdraw the money now, knowing that it could be a lot more later. The government is giving handouts of $1,500 per fortnight. So if you need to get by, there has to be another way rather than losing a hell of a lot of money because there's no way that you're gonna be able to catch up that $20,000 uh, before the market takes off again. So you're really shooting yourself in the foot by withdrawing the money now, not being able to recoup that in the coming months as the market starts to adjust and balance out and then take off again in, in a couple of years to come. You know, it's taken five years to at least get that 20 grand if you're on minimum wage. So obviously that is the reason, that is the advice that I'd be giving to my friends and family. It's obviously not a financial advisor and some random on YouTube. Let's keep a lookout for this Aussie market that's going to tank again because of the Australian government allowing people to withdraw their superannuation money. And there is a lot of money in the markets that are sitting in retirement funds. So you can bet that when this is passed and people are allowed to withdraw it, it will have a decent effect on the market. Obviously, my opinion only, you're here on my channel, that's why you're uh, listening to some random on the YouTube and I appreciate that. If you found this video helpful, useful in any which way, I'd really love it if you could like it down below, make that little thumb go blue, helps out the channel, helps push this video out to more people, uh, more people get to see the message and hopefully not make a $47,000 mistake in the future. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. I know quite a few of you watch these videos and you haven't subscribed yet. Again, that helps out the channel. That's all I'm asking of these videos. Like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts. Do you know anyone that is looking to withdraw their superannuation money? Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've tried to help them out, any suggestions, any thoughts, any comments you've given them that maybe they've seen the light not to do it. And I'll leave it there until next video. You can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. Love to see you guys over there. I'll catch you at the next one. And remember as always, until next time, have more fun to get more done.